what it is what it is we're in south australia adelaide to be precise and i'm here with hip-hop royalty these guys don't need introductions man but i will reintroduce you guys pressure suffer the mighty hilltop hoods what it is oh actually you have they say in adelaide what's the deal what's the deal what's the feel feel yeah we're in uh baza studio takeaway studio and uh, it's interesting, you said it was a, a great catchphrase for this studio, right? The takeaway studio. This is Debris' uh, catchphrase. The, the, the worse he eats, the better he feels. Takeaway studios, what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we're in the studio making it happen, as they say, in, in the rap circles. Yeah. Working on the album. Working on the album. Much anticipated drinking from the sun. Anticipated, anticipated by us. <laughs> <laughs> we're very excited about this. <laughs> so what's going on today, though? Um, I'm recording uh, the last track, and you just I, I just finished recording a track we've got coming out called Speaking in Tongues. Mm. Gonna, gonna be featuring Charlie Tuna. I don't know if you can use that. <laughs> yeah, no, Charlie Tuna's on it. Yeah, and another person uh, appearing on the album, appearing on the first single as well. I love it. Sia, produced by One Above. Yep. A uh, great producer that's really stunned to find his own isn't he yeah he's, he's a local Adelaide guy that I think hit Suff up a while ago no I found him through our initiative oh okay well, there you go <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was just a synergy up in the hills there and you, nah. you <laughs> he uh, the local. He, he applied for the initiative mm -hmm. you heard his CD yes. how he is one of the judges on our initiative yes so we don't judge it so if you want to blame someone he did it Mr. 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 Blamey Pants over here. Write those bigger checks, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I was mediating the discussion with you guys, I got to hear his work. And um, although he didn't win the grant, I hit him up afterwards and asked him to send us some beats because I loved his beats. And yeah, uh, singles out. And obviously, we're talking about the album coming out. Is there much pressure upon yourselves? Yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't put that much weight on man. Come on. <laughs> but Fred, you know, like when you're working on an album, you know, cause, because you guys really opened the door for a lot of artists to chart well, you know, like the drafts, Bissonessos, 360s. So is, do you feel there's a lot of pressure getting back into the chart? Does that play in your mind when you're creating music or is that just like... I don't, I don't think, like, all that, all that side of things is for our manager to worry about. All, all we got to worry about is this. Hmm. And then, and then the rest of it's up to him. Yeah, it, it's definitely not one of those things that's in the back of your head or whatever when you're actually creating the music, but it, it does get applied uh, once we sort of start putting the music out and it starts getting reviewed and, you know, people are critiquing it and all that sort of thing. And, and do you ever feel, no, that, that, that critique actually stabbed me in the heart a little bit? No, I think about it like... Uh, I take that stuff positively like I used to it used to eat me up and every now and then it'll happen like once a year something will get to me um, Twitter rant <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like I look at it like this like seriously if we'd been making music for the last 10 years and all people had been saying to us was like everything you do is great this is fantastic blah 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 if all you heard about yourself for 10 years was good things then you wouldn't push yourself at all like these people hating they don't understand how much they help you and how much they better you and how much they improve you and how much they make you more successful so like you know uh, you know thank you <laughs> thank you very from the bottom thank, of suffer's heart from the bottom of my heart thank you for hating <laughs> so we're talking about the future of the album but what i am interested is because a lot to a lot of younger kids a lot of generations you can be considered old school now. Uh oh. Yeah, old school. <laughs> but to me, you know, it, it, it's great to see you still, you know, achieving these great things. But for me, I'm interested to know to take it back and tell me about your early experiences, like the first time you you ha uh, felt hip hop in Adelaide. Who, who did you see or who did you hear? Who did you first talk to? Well, I, I don't. Firstly, I don't consider ourselves old school because well, I don't either. Old, but, old school know. to me is like is like you know flash and that and like <laughs> like that's old school. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like as far as the Australian scene goes as well. Like old school to me is like the cats like Reason yeah. and uh, 
and Deathwish and, and guys like that. Um, and you know, we have been a lo- around a long time, but we started at a really young age. Mm. Um, so yeah, but the guys that we were feeling in Adelaide around around this time, like Flack was obviously our mentor yeah. from Crossbred Mongrels, who Debris was in a group with. Um, Finger licking good, uh, Kira Mystics and Madcap were obviously mentors to us as well. Um, Red Eyed Peas, Risk yeah, and Perish, fun. yeah. Pressure, Safa, thank you very much for joining me. Howie TV, Cheers. always a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Zdell, Howie, if you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs>